Thank you, Dave. In his fascinating new book, Letters to My Grandchildren, environmental icon David Suzuki shares stories and wisdom from his own remarkable life and challenges his six grandchildren to live their lives with courage and conviction. And of his more than 40 books, it's certainly his most personal work ever. Really pleased to have David Suzuki himself in studio. And thank you. This was a really lovely, heartfelt read. Well, I'm delighted that you've read it and, and enjoyed it. Uh, let's talk about your embracing the idea of being an elder. Well, you know, in our youth-oriented culture, people don't want to be called old. And so elders are kind of, well, we want to get them out of the way. We don't. So I was reluctant to, uh, to call myself an elder. Mm -hmm. But in First Nations communities, elders are like rock stars because they've got the knowledge and experience to pass on. And I think elders have a very special place in society. We don't have to kiss anybody's beside, behind now right. because we're worried about getting a promotion or, or a raise. Uh, we can, we're not seeking more fame or, or money or power. So we're really free to speak the truth from our hearts. Mm -hmm. And if someone's offended, that's their problem, not, not ours. So I keep telling elders, look, you've lived a lifetime. You've learned a lot. You've made mistakes, had failures, suffered, suffered uh, some successes. Now's the time to pass what you've learned on. And elders ought to get off the couch or the golf course <laughs> and get out there telling young people what they've learned in a lifetime. But was that a process for you? Because it's, it's painful for most of us to um, even, you know, acknowledge aging and sickness and, and death. And, and, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Fortunately, biology does something <laughs> for us. And, you know, right. we sag and we, we get all out of shape. and. Uh, being older, you have to accept that uh, mm -hmm. physical changes are happening. Sure as hell makes accepting elderhood a lot easier. And, uh, and being an elder, to me, adds status to who I am. It's, it's a position of responsibility because I have lived a lifetime, and now I've got to, I've got to pass on my lessons. Okay, so you have six grandchildren you're speaking I to. Do. They a, a range greatly in age. Right. So you're sort of speaking to them some, well, you, have, you speak to them personally at the end of the book. Um, a lot of different subject matter, racism, aging death, you talk a lot about uh, your history. Was there one section or one chapter for you that was particularly challenging? Well, the one I, I think is more, most important to them is the chapter on fame. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of my grandsons said, Bampa, he calls me Bampa. Eh, Bampa, are, are you famous? I said, mm -hmm. well, why do you say that? And he said, well, the kids say that you're on TV. He's not allowed to watch TV. So, so then I had to explain to him, you know, that that kind of fame is so superficial that you know, it, it doesn't mean anything. Nobody who sees me on TV knows who I am or what I really represent. Right. And so, just trying to educate them, we see kids run after trying to be famous. You know, and they look at we're a, a celebrity cult, where we just look up to people. You know, but like, what does it mean to be a Paris Hilton or a Kim Kardashian? Mm -hmm. Like, do, do does it matter? You know. Right. Someone like <clears throat> Nelson Mandela, thank God there have mm -hmm. been people like that. So I just want them to understand the nature of having a presence mm -hmm. in the public eye. Well, through that, we actually learned a little more about you, which I thought was really nice. Like, you like American football, which we never would have known. <laughs> well, I lived known. in the States for eight years. <laughs> never would have known after <laughs> reading this book. Uh, well, overall, I, I guess, what are you left with? I mean, you have this that, that they can have and treasure forever. Are you optimistic about the world that you will be leaving behind for them? I, I am neither an optimist nor a pessimist, but I have hope. Mm. But things are looking very, very bad when I think of the warnings that came about climate change. In 1988, scientists were saying the, the evidence is in, we've got to do something, and all of the delaying and the, you know, what, what you see the fossil fuel industry saying it'll destroy the economy, blah, blah, blah. And we're going backwards. So uh, then I look at Alberta and say, oh my goodness, 44 years of conservatives out the window? Do I have hope? Yes, I have a lot of hope. <laughs> People are making changes, so there you go. Uh, well, your grandchildren are very lucky, as are the rest of we, because uh, rest of us, because we can pick this up as well. Letters to my grandchildren is the book. Uh, the great David Suzuki joining us this morning. Links and information: breakfasttelevision.ca. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to see you. My as pleasure. Always. We're going to check in with.